But if you do a 200 kilogram bench press, firstly, amazing. <laughs> but if you're doing a 200 kilogram bench press and then you lose six to eight pounds and you're still doing a 200 kilogram bench press, what a great barometer to say, hey, I haven't lost any muscle because I'm still at the same strength. <laughs> There's two real things when it comes to the gym and trying to look really big and jacked, and that's putting on the muscle and then trying to lose all the fat and look like, yeah, I look like an Adonis. Somebody make a statue out of me. Uh, I find the former is more exciting and interesting than the latter, but we have to do both. So today, we shall focus on losing weight and getting jacked and getting your abs and walking around with your top off even when there is no need. My name is Simon Miller. Thank you very much for joining me. If you are brand new, please hit the subscribe button and hit that like thing as well because YouTube loves engagement. And if you are interested, I'm just a guy that enjoys lifting weights. So I thought I'd start making videos about fitness and the gym. It just makes me happy. And hopefully it provides a little bit of information for you as well. So let's not stand on ceremony anymore, Mr. Wayne. And here's 10 things you gotta do when you're losing weight and getting jacked. And you think, hmm, wait a minute. Simon did a video like this before. I did, but I did it as a live stream. So now it's just lost in the YouTube ether. So I thought I'd do it again. So this time, hopefully people actually see it. Number 10 is do not just rely on the scale. The scale is an interesting thing or your weight is an interesting thing because it can send people absolutely bonkers. Like you can go to bed at 15 stone and then you wake up the next day and you're 15.3 and you're like, oh my God, oh my gosh, what has happened? I can't believe it. And if you've got a trainer, you email them or you ring them and you have some kind of a breakdown, even though there's no need because water weight is this horrible, horrible I don't know, ghoul that will sneak up on you at the worst moments and make you think that you're actually going on the wrong track. And usually you'll hold on to water weight if you've taken in too much sodium or salt, or maybe you had a cheat meal and your body's just, it will hold on to water. It just will because of the things we've just talked about. There's more science to that, but I don't like to bore people with science. Use the scale in conjunction with everything else that's going on. So obviously using numbers is always going to be good. If numbers are going down and reducing, you can kind of say, okay, hopefully I'm headed in the right direction. But you've got to look in the mirror too. And really you should bring on other people as well, but we'll talk about that later on in the video. So just make sure that isn't the only thing, the only tool you're using when you're trying to get ripped and jacked. Because otherwise you're just gonna, well, you're not gonna end up where you wanna be. You're gonna get confused and eventually you'll start crying. It just happens because especially when you do get into a calorie deficit, your body starts wondering what's going on. It sends hormones flying around the place. And I'm not kidding, you get emotional. If you're gonna train for a bodybuilding competition, I will bet my ass, not literally because I need it, but in the three, maybe the two weeks building up to it, when you really get into a state of controlled starvation, you'll just start crying. And that's because your body is like, I don't know what you're doing. I don't like it. Please stop. You have to say, shut up, body. We got to look awesome in a couple of weeks. You deal with it. But the point is, use the scale. Make notes of it. You can do it every day if you want, but don't get obsessed. There's other things you can do. Number nine is sleep. Rest. I mean, look, if you're going to put your body through the wars by trying to get it to, you know, to lose weight, the one thing you can give it back is suitable rest and recovery. You need that when you're growing, and I would argue you need it even more when you're trying to get ripped and jacked. People seem to ignore this all the time because it seems so obvious. It's like drinking loads of water. Again, if you're going to step on a stage, that's different, but we're not talking about that today. But rest, recovery, and water, three easy things. You can do it right now, watch. See? I got some rest and recovery there. If I had a bottle of water, I would grab it now and drink it just to prove my point. But hopefully we all have taps or access to taps, which we are very lucky about. Let's not pretend otherwise. But make sure you're drinking water and making sure you're trying to get those eight hours. Look, nobody understands more than me how hard it is to get sleep. I suck at sleeping. If I get six hours, I do a backflip because my brain all screwed up. But at least have the... The will to sleep. Don't just go gym, 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 gym all the time. Because especially again, when you're entering a calorie deficit and you're not going to be getting the nutrients that you need or the sustenance that you would need normally, there's other things you've got to make sure you're doing. And one of them is hitting the bed. Number eight is just get your cardio in however you want. Don't buy into fasted cardio. Don't buy into non-fasted cardio. Don't buy in so that you shouldn't be doing it after weights. Don't buy in that you shouldn't be doing it before bed. Don't buy in that it should just be a bike, or it should just be a treadmill, or it should just be a, a cross trainer, an elliptical. Find what works for you and do that. The only one I would say is not a good idea is to do cardio before you're lifting weights, because I think, again, you're not going to be eating that much food or as much food as you have been up to this point. So you're going to be so fatigued and tired, you're probably not going to train too well, and then that will have an effect on your muscles. But 
everyone gets mad when I say this, but you can find a scientific study for anything. Personally, yes, I like fasted cardio. It works for my brain and it makes me feel good. So I'm like, well, I should continue doing that because it makes me feel good. And if I'm feeling good, I'm going to train a bit harder. But there is no right or wrong when it comes to cardio. If you're trying to do 45 minutes of cardio a day, just get in 45 minutes of cardio a day. There's other arguments when it comes to steady state cardio versus HIIT cardio. For me and my body, I find if I over rely on HIIT cardio, I do start tapping into my muscle stores and I lose muscle and I don't want that. So I rely on steady state, but maybe your body's not like that. But again, I would... Well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to argue either way. I think that's going to be a, um, a trial and test, a litmus test method with yourself, which it's going to suck. It happened to me too. It's going to suck because you may go down the wrong path for a little bit. But try not to overly listen to these people that will bash you over the head with either one of them because it's not true. It's just not true. Number seven is try not to lose too much weight too quickly because if those numbers are going down way too quick, you're probably losing muscle as well. And then what's the point? If you spent all this time and all these months trying to build up your muscle and then you get to the end of the cut and you look at yourself like, well, I don't look good at all, you ain't going to be happy. Again, you're going to be sad and sadness is what we're trying to to move away to. The general rule of thumb has always been one to two pounds a week. That works for me. I found in the past if I stick to that, I get to a pretty good, you know, a pretty good state in uh, six, eight, 12 weeks, depending what I'm doing. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Keep writing this all down as well. Write your weight down every day. Write how much weight you are losing over a week because that will go crazy. But yeah, I think one to two pounds a week is a, is a good thing to go for. But again, I think the mirror is even more important than all of that. If you like how you look, you've done it. You're a success. Number six is don't miss meals. I still get this. People in the comments, and bless you, thank you for engaging. But they say, Simon, I'm about to start my cut and I'm going to not eat breakfast anymore. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> don't, don't do that because one of two things is going to happen. One, you'll go so low down in calories that your body will think it's starving and it will just hold on to fat. That's why when you see, you know, people that are in struggling countries, they have that, you know, they're not eating anything, but they have sort of like an elongated be- belly. And that's because that's their body just trying to hold on to anything it can. You're not putting it in an optimum, an optimum position to lose fat and lose weight at all. But also, if you're that harsh on yourself, what eventually will happen is you'll run yourself into the ground and you will start binge eating. Because that's what we do as human beings. You're crazy anyway up here if you are lifting weights and doing all of this. I should know because I'm nuts. But you will. You get to the point where you'll just explode and you'll have one biscuit and then you've eaten 42 biscuits. And we do that. I do it with cereal. I love cereal, and I have it in the house, and I shouldn't. But if I think I'm going to have one bowl of cereal, it's then two hours later, and I've had three boxes of cereal. I'm like, man, I've, I've, I've ruined I've ruined this this massively. And really, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Even if I got really fat, who gives a crap? But I don't want to do that. But So don't do that. Get your diet in. Figure out what you're going to need to do. Ensure you're going to be taking bits away here and there as you progress. But do not miss meals. You need meals. You can eat five times a day. You can eat three times a day. You can eat six times a day. You can eat four times a day. Just figure out what your calorie count is. Get those calories in and stick to it. And plan in cheat meals too because you need it. Number five is don't not train heavy. I know I've talked about this before, but I'll talk about it until the cows come home. And I don't even know what that means. One of the greatest, I can't think of the right word, but one of the greatest examples you can have of the fact that you're not losing muscle is by keeping your gym lifts as strong as they were before you started to cut. I still can't get my head around this. I know I'm repeating myself. But if you do a 200 kilogram bench press, firstly, amazing. (laughs) But if you're doing a 200 kilogram bench press and then you lose six to eight pounds and you're still doing a 200 kilogram bench press, what a great barometer to say, hey, I haven't lost any muscle because I'm still at the same strength. Don't all of a sudden go to high rep land and low weight just because you think you are, it's time to get cut or ripped. That's nonsense. You should train heavy when you want to train heavy and you should train light when you think you need to change things up a little bit. So use that as the greatest indicator that you're not losing muscle. Train as strong and as heavy as you have done before. And you may lose a little bit, of course, because that's just mother nature. But if, if, if you go down to 185, 190 kilogram bench press, again, still a great idea that, hey, I'm doing this right. So please don't do that. If you're going to take anything else away from the, the only one thing you're going to take away from video is that do that. Keep your lifts where they were and then just react as they change. Number four, don't just cut out a bunch of carbs. It's such a stupid thing to do unless you are on a specific keto diet or no carb diet, whatever you you know you plan to be doing. But I don't think you should do it because one, eventually you will reintroduce them and your body will be so shocked by this carbohydrate. You're going to put a bunch of 
weight back on, but also carbs are nice and carbs are a source of energy. Just eat balanced and in moderation. Carbs are not your enemy. Carbs are your friend, much like fats. Fats are not your enemy. The right fats are awesome for you. They're going to keep your cholesterol in check and they're going to keep you healthy. And never forget that we are trying to be healthy. It's called health and fitness for a reason. You don't want to get ill and you don't want to get sick. And you certainly don't want to have some kind of carb rebound where you have one carb and then your body goes, what was that? It tasted delicious. And it will happen. It will send signals going, eat more carbs, eat more carbs. And then you will leave it in the four boxes of cereal and you'll be me. And do you want to be me? No, you don't. I'm a bald asshole. Number three, just mentioned it, but I want to double down on it. Fat is still your friend. You're going to need some fat. It sounds like I'm singing a silly song. I'm sorry I didn't mean to do it. That was annoying. I hate myself too. But yes, carbs and fats together are important. Of course, you need your protein because protein is the building block for muscles. But carbs and fats have their place too. So any diet you get, unless again, like you're doing a specific keto, blah, blah, blah diet. That's different. A paleo, just completely different. But if you are on some normal plan and somebody then goes, oh, you got to cut all your fats. That's nuts. That's crazy. The irony, that's nuts where you can get fat from. Number two, this goes back to the thing we talked about earlier, and I kind of cut myself off because I wanted to save it for here. If you're not going to get a personal trainer, and I would implore you to do it if you can afford it for this very reason, but it's not essential, send pictures of yourself to a friend or to a third party is what I mean, who you know is not going to bullshit you because there is no way you're going to be a good judge of your own physique. Nobody can do it. I wake up every day and I hate how I look, which sounds nuts. I don't mean that in a, oh, Simon. I mean, that's what we do. That's what almost, uh, you know, gets the motivation to go to the gym is that, is this pursuit of the dangling carrot, which we're never actually going to get. Eat carrots too. I know they're full of sugar, but they're good for you. They're nutrients. They won't kill you. But yeah, if you can do that and you know somebody is going to give you good feedback and a personal trainer absolutely will, which is why I bring them up, utilize that. Utilize it as a tool. They can say, oh, your deltoid looks a bit a bit worse, or you need to do this, you need to do that. And as long as you're thick-skinned enough to accept that criticism, and of course it's hard, nobody wants to hear that, it's just another great way to make sure that you're on track. So that's just a good little tip. And number one is don't beat yourself up if you go off track and accept that, yes, the process does suck. Of course it does suck. What you're getting yourself to do is a bunch of cardio, which few people actually like. I mean, some people do, but running on a treadmill for 45 minutes is not fun. And also, you're removing food that you enjoy. <laughs> like, let's not pretend it's fun. What's fun and what's good is that you're going to look great at the end of it. You know, it's the goal, it's the achievement, it's the target that you're aiming for. But it is difficult. And if it wasn't difficult, everybody would do it. You know, everyone would be a quantum physicist if it was easy, but it's not. And it takes a lot of time. And it's the same here. So if you do fall off track, that's okay. Again, don't beat yourself up. If you do have four boxes of cereal, that's not great. But it's going to happen. As I said, I've done that too. Just accept it for what it is. Make sure you get back to where you need to be. And yeah, just take it day by day. I mean, my word, where we are right now. So this early April, April the 4th, I think it is today, maybe April the 3rd. If you watch this video in a year, it is coming from the time where there is a global pandemic in the world. Health and fitness is awesome. Looking muscular and like you've just fallen out of the pages of a comic book is great. But there are far more essential things in the world. So of course, keep going after your goals. Of course, set a target for yourself and try and hit it as best you can. But if you fall off the wagon, just get back on and everything is going to be okay. So there you go. There are some tips for losing weight and getting jacked, which let's face it, a lot of us may be doing when we are allowed out of our houses again. Because I said it in all my videos, but it's true. Unless you're a rich celebrity <laughs> and you don't have a proper gym in your house, you are just doing what you can with dumbbells and barbells and, and things like that. But hopefully they help. Hello to the guy in the comments that thinks I offer no assistance <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> You're a lovely person. I appreciate you stopping by. Please hit the subscribe button. Please hit that thumb. I do have a Patreon, patreon.com forward to summer 316 because as I always say, you don't make jack all on YouTube unless you're doing hundreds of thousands of views, which I'm not, but I love doing it. So I'm going to do it anyway. And that's just a way you can finance me should you so wish. If not, I just appreciate you being here and I'll see you soon.